हेलो एवरीवन होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल आई एम विद्याश्री दिस इज पार्ट टू वीडियो ऑन केमिकल पीरियोडिसिटी इफ यू हैवन टू वॉच पार्ट वन वीडियो ऑन केमिकल पीरियोडिसिटी यू कैन वॉच द वीडियो बाय क्लिकिंग ऑन द प्लेलिस्ट लिंक दैट्स गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो दिस वीडियो इन पार्ट वन वीडियो ऑन केमिकल पीरियोडिसिटी आई हैड डिस्कस्ड अ फ्यू अर्लियर अटेम्प्ट दैट वेर मेड बाई द साइंटिस्ट टू क्लासीफाई दी एलिमेंट्स नव इन दिस पार्ट टू वीडियो i will be discussing a few important points related to modern periodic table without wasting time i'll directly start the video you know we have studied mendeleev's periodic law where he told that the physical and chemical properties of the elements are a function of atomic mass of the element musli told that physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic function of atomic numbers of these elements so previously mendeleev told properties were directly proportional to atomic mass mendeleev classified elements according to the increasing order of atomic masses but later on experimental studies told that physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of atomic number so now this law that's given by mosley is termed as modern periodic law and this law is considered as basis for modern periodic table then these are elements were arranged in the increasing order of atomic number they observed that properties of elements that is repeated after regular intervals whatever we have told as periodic function right so they observed properties of elements are repeating at a regular interval of 2 8 8 18 18 18 18 32 these numbers are called as magic numbers so magic numbers are those numbers at which elements with similar properties are repeated so magic numbers are 2 8 8 18 18 18 32 now why there occurs periodicity means why at a definite interval there occurs elements with similar properties is because of their similar outer electronic configuration once you write the electronic configuration for different elements with different atomic numbers you can make out the outer electronic configuration of those elements if the outer electronic configuration is same then those elements will have similar properties now let us consider the different number of elements that's present in different periods of periodic table there are seven periods in the periodic table so in the first period principal valence shell that is n is equal to 1 so here the orbitals that are being filled is 1s orbital and there are two elements that's present in the first period of the periodic table coming to the second period n is equal to 2 2s and 2p orbitals are being filled after filling of 1s orbital and we have eight elements in the second period for third period n is equal to 3 so the orbitals after filling of 1s 2s and 2p 3s and 3p orbitals are filled we have eight elements fourth period n is equal to 4 and the next orbitals that are being filled with respect to fourth period is 4s followed by 3d followed by 4p and we have 18 elements in fourth period coming to the fifth period n is equal to 5 the orbitals that are being filled are 5s followed by 4d followed by 5p we have 18 elements in fifth period for sixth period the principal valence shell is equal to 6 orbitals that are being filled is 6s followed by 4f followed by 5d followed by 6p number of elements we have is 32 for seventh period principal valence shell is n is equal to 7 orbitals that are being filled are 7s 5f 6d 7p you know these orbitals are filled according to increasing order of their energies and in the seventh period also we have 32 elements these numbers are magic numbers you know properties repeat after a definite interval 
right after 2 8 8 18 18 32 32 so this number what we call is as magic number now let's consider a few structural features of the long form of periodic table so long form of periodic table is also called as Bohr's periodic table so we have 18 groups and 7 periods in this periodic table periods are horizontal rows of the periodic table so horizontal rows are called as periods so we have seven such horizontal rows means we have seven periods in the modern periodic table so first period has two elements so that is hydrogen and helium so this period is the shortest period of the periodic table because it has only two elements so that is the shortest period of the periodic table then we have second period with elements from lithium to neon and third period consists of elements from sodium to argon. So both these periods, second and third period have eight elements present in each of the second and third period. So these two periods we call it as short periods. First period has only two elements. It is the shortest period. Second and third Periods are known as short periods of the periodic table. Coming to fourth and fifth period. Fourth period has elements from potassium to krypton. And fifth period having elements from rubidium to xenon. So both these periods consist of 18 elements. And these two periods are long periods. Sixth period is having elements from cesium to radon. Consisting of 32 elements. And sixth period is the longest period of the periodic table then we have seventh period starting with the element francium so this period is still incomplete and it consists of 26 elements we have 18 vertical columns in the periodic table and these vertical columns are known as groups group 1 elements are called as alkali metals group 2 metals are called alkaline earth metals group 16 elements are called as charcogens because they are ore forming elements and we have group 17 elements which are halogens they are sea salt forming elements group 18 elements are called as noble gases or they are also called as inert gases all the elements that's present in the periodic table which are arranged in the form of horizontal rows and vertical columns are divided into four main blocks. So these blocks are S block, P block, D block and F block. So the basis for formation of these blocks is the subshells to which valence electron enters. If in an element valence electron is entering to the F subshell then that element will come under F block. If the last electron that's valence electron is entering into S orbital then those elements are belonging to S block. So similar with respect to P block and D block. Among the 18 groups that is present in the periodic table elements which belong to group 1 and group 2 are S block elements. It is because the last electrons is entering into the S subshell in these elements. How to identify whether an element is belonging to S block, P block, D block or F block. So that's where we have to consider electronic configuration of the elements. For example, consider lithium. Atomic number of lithium is 3. Write the electronic configuration. It is 1s2, 2s1. Now you see the valence electron. Valence electron means the electron that is present in the outermost shell. So here valence electron is present in 2s subshell. So 2s means it is s subshell. So the last electron is entering into s subshell. Therefore lithium is an s block element. And we have the general electronic configuration for S block element is Ns1 to 2. So for group 1 elements, outer electronic configuration is Ns1, 
and for group 2 elements outer electronic configuration will be ns2 so you you can check from the electronic configuration of lithium that lithium is belonging to s block and it is belonging to group 1 of the periodic table why because it has general electronic configuration ns1 moving on to p block elements so those elements which belong to group 13 to group 18 of the periodic table are p block elements so they are p block elements because the valence electron is entering into the p orbital so the general electronic configuration with respect to p block elements is ns2 np126 p orbital can accommodate maximum of 6 electron therefore their electronic configuration can be np1 np2 np3 np4 or np5 or it can be np6 among the elements of p block we have metals non metals and metalloids metalloids are those elements which have properties between metals and non metals so this is the only block means p block is the only block where we have metals non metals as well as metalloids for example now let us consider nitrogen atomic number is 7 write the electronic configuration it's 1s2 2s2 2p5 now you see last electron here is entering to the p orbital so therefore nitrogen is a p block element the elements of s block and p block are together they are called as representative elements switching on to d block elements so whenever the valence electron is entering into the d orbital those elements will fall under d block elements of group 13 to group 12 are d block elements in these d block elements their inner shell is incomplete so they are called as transition metal so it is basically the properties of elements are changing from metallic nature to the non-metallic nature we observe a transition in the properties of the elements so they are named as transition elements the general electronic configuration of d block element is n minus 1 d 1 to 10 n s 0 to 2 so it is because this d orbital is incomplete with respect to these elements they are known as transition elements so these d block elements are generally colored and they are paramagnetic in nature and they exhibit variable valency paramagnetic are those which are attracted towards the magnetic field the two series of elements that is 4f and 5f series elements which are lanthanoids and actinoids so where the last electron is entering to the 4f and 5f orbitals are known as f block elements general electronic configuration is n minus 2 f 1 to 14 n minus 1 d 1 to 10 n s 1 to 2 they are also known as inner transition elements here we have elements with atomic number more than 92 means elements with atomic number greater than uranium they are called as transuranium elements so these transuranium elements are not found in nature they are synthesized artificially in a number of nuclear reactions now we know that the elements of the periodic table are classified into four blocks s block p block d block and f block then you need to know if any element is given or any atomic number is given we should be knowing how we can identify the period number or group number of that particular element so in the next video i will tell you how you can identify the period number as well as group number for an element when you are provided with its atomic number i hope you will find this video helpful if so please do like and share this video among your friends and family if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get notified about the upcoming videos i'll meet you in my next video
Thank you for watching. Stay connected. Keep learning. Take care.